So let's just jump into it. So, okay, so I'd like to introduce myself. Hello, my name is Ivan Zujic, and today I'll, I'll be talking about Algolia search in Drupal. And this isn't going to be a full how to use it. I'll just show you how to quickly get started and also things that I've discovered while using it. Okay, so just a bit about myself. My name is Ivan Zujek. I've been doing Drupal for, poof, I don't know, 12 years, 15 years, a very long time. And um, I also write about Drupal over at webwash.net. So if you want to learn about tutorials, and I do have a few free courses about Drupal. I am in the process of writing about other things, believe it or not, um, because I believe you know Drupal's at this point where it's great and you can integrate it with a lot of other things. So this is a good example of um, integrating Drupal with Algolia. And I also do uh, freelancing as well as a Drupal consultant or as a Drupal freelancer, and I am available. So if you do have any, um, so if anyone's looking for a Drupal dev and looking for somebody on the East Coast of Australia, um, just hit me up. Okay, so let's jump into it. So what is Algolia? Well, Algolia is a SaaS search engine. So it is uh, delivered as software as a service. So there's nothing required. So there is nothing for you to install locally. It's not like um, Solar or Elasticsearch, okay? Everything is run in the cloud and all you have to do is set up your system, in our case Drupal, to just send data into it and then Algolia handles the rest. Of course, you need to pay for it, but it is a software as a service. And if you want to learn more about it, head over to algolia.com. Now, just to mention that I am not being paid by the company, I'm not affiliated with them. I just used their service and I found it very interesting and it was fun to use. So I just want to iterate that uh, because yeah, it's not open source. You can't download it and run it yourself locally. So that's just something to be aware of. But if you do want to uh, learn more about it, just just type in Algolia in Drupal. You'll, pr you'll probably type it, spell it wrong like I do, but Google will figure it out. Now, recently on a project, um, I worked with another person and the client wanted to use Algolia because um, from a client standpoint, it actually gave a lot of great analytics. Because think of it like this, if you run an e-commerce website and you have hundreds, you know, hundreds or thousands of products, a lot of people will search for things. And from a business standpoint, it's important to try and figure out what people are searching for. Of course, certain websites, you know, if you're running a basic blog, nine times out of 10, people won't really be using your search. But if you are building an e-commerce website, search is very important. So the client came to us and asked us to do a proof of concept to, to integrate Algolia in Drupal. And at first I thought, oh, here we go. You know, just use Solar. Don't worry about it. But I was pleasantly surprised with what Algolia offered. And so here's another screenshot of what some of the analytics looks like. Now, I mentioned the uh, client side of it. Now, from a dev standpoint, Algolia has a lot of backend libraries. So you can integrate it with PHP, Symfony, so frameworks, JavaScript, Java, and you can see a lot of platforms that you can push out of because you first need to get your data into Algolia. So that's, so that's the first part. And then once it's in there, they also have a front-end library called Instant Search, where you can build powerful search pages. And best of all, it's actually available in um, libraries such as Vue, Angular, React, or even vanilla JavaScript. And if you are developing on iOS or Android, you can also use it. And this is what, and, and this Instant Search is really what what caught my attention because it was actually fun to build a pretty powerful search search page just by using React. So for the rest of this uh, presentation, I'm going to be focusing on the React implementation of uh, Instant Search. So here is a perfect example. So I think on this side, this is a screenshot of Sandbox um, code sandbox. And, and this bit of React code, well, I wouldn't say it's a bit what it's about. I don't know, 20, 40, like 20 lines of React code um, is all that is required to build this search page 
here on the right. Of course, there's still styling getting injected in, but from an actual physical code that you need to write, it's just about 20 lines of code. And then up the top, and I'll show you later on, you're just importing a whole bunch of stuff. But as you can see, it's actually very quick and easy to get these type of search pages built. And then they also have extensive documentation. So here, this is this is an example of all the components you can use, the React components. And then if I zoom in a bit, you can see that you have like refinement list, menu, uh, hierarchical menu, hits, infinite hits. And these are all components you can use to build out these search pages. And so that's a bit of an overview of what Algolia is. Now let's quickly talk about how you would implement it in Drupal. Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to create an account and also create a free index. Now, they actually do have a community plan, uh, which is free, but it's only free for non-commercial use. And, and when you do create an index, uh, you do get, I think, a 14-day trial of the starter plan, which starts at $29. Now, $29 to me doesn't really sound like a lot, especially if you're making money off your website. but uh, but I do know from experience, clients will, 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 you know, kick and scream to avoid paying $29, but they'll be more than happy, you know, to spend hours in a meeting or something. But um, yeah, if your site is making money starting at, you know, just spending $29 at the beginning for powerful search is a no brainer, really. But you can use the community one for free to test things out. And then... And then once you've created your index, you want to go ahead and create an API key. Now, I'll show you later on, but you do actually have a, an uh, admin API key. Now, of course, you shouldn't use that because, um, because that because that API key has access to absolutely everything. So instead, you would want to go and create a custom API key. But most importantly, you need to configure the right ACL permissions or in search API, you'll get fatal errors because certain, certain methods aren't allowed because the user doesn't have access to it. And so instead of search API um, telling you, you, you know, you don't have access to it, well, it does um, tell you that you don't have access to it because it just throws up a fatal error. So after a bit of research, I figured out that it was these um, five permissions you needed um, to actually run it nicely in Drupal. And then of course, um, to, to integrate all of this into Drupal, you will need to use Search API Algolia. Now, Search API is a great module in Drupal that allows you to index your content and also create search pages. Um, and the great thing about Search API is that the backend is abstracted away. So you can create your index once, and then you can have your index stored in Solar, in the, in the database, in Elasticsearch, or in this case, Algolia. So this module offers a backend to simply push your data, uh, your search index into Algolia. And one thing I will just mention, a bit of a side, a side thing. I, I actually now appreciate just how powerful Search API is because I was working on another CMS that had no module like Search API, and it was actually very difficult to build a decent search page. And sometimes I take that for granted, just how powerful Search API is, just for creating random search pages. All right, so I think that's it for the slides. So let me now go ahead and show you a few things. So I'm just looking at my notes. Okay, one thing I will mention is that, let me go to an actual issue. So if your site is set up uh, for, so if your site is a multilingual site, search the Search API Angolia won't work because essentially what happens is that if your site is configured with multiple languages, then let me just zoom in, it tries to do funky things like put in a, um, put in like an underscore then language for the index name. And so it kind of just breaks. And that's one thing I kind of discovered because I was hoping to use in this demo, I was hoping to use Umami, which is a, a test installation profile with a bit of proper data in it, but but that installation profile is uh, multilingual. And then, so yeah, everything just kind of died. So 
Uh, that's just one thing to be aware of. If your site is multilingual, you might have trouble. Well, at this point, this, this ticket is critical, so it doesn't really uh, work. So now let's just go and check out the back end. Well, let me just uh, log in. So what I'll quickly do is just show you the back end. And then, so here is the actual UI for uh, to manage everything. Um, so if you go to API keys, as I was mentioning, the first thing you want to do is set up the API key. You can see that the admin API key um, isn't shown, but you do have the search only API key, and this key is meant to be used in your front end code. So this one is safe to show because if you have it in your front end code, people can can query your content, and um, people will be able to figure out figure it out. But if you then go to all API keys, you can then see a list of all of the API keys. Now, if we go here, you can see the actual individual index and you can see also, so then if we go to configuration, you can see all of the options that you have here. Um, by default, you need to, well, by default, the searchable attributes is empty. So you need to tell Algolia which fields you want to search on. And then you do have a lot of other options like um, ranking and also sorting, custom ranking, um, which I think is pretty good because I know it's come up a few times where the client just wants one piece of content to appear above all else. And then you need to explain to them that, you know, how kind of, you know, how search actually works. And it's kind of hard to have that, to build that functionality for that only one piece of content to appear because it just depends how it all works. But um, by using this system, you can just hand this over to the client and say, here, go nuts. And then if you want to set up facets, you can also do so as well just by uh, selecting one of your attributes and um, configuring it as a facet. And then you can check out stats and do all sorts of stuff and see how it's used. And then you can also see, and then you can even, I think it's this one, yeah, you can go in and edit the records and you can even search for things as well. And you can see all of the attributes here. Okay, so let me now just quickly show you in uh, Drupal what it looks like. So it's configuring it in Drupal now. I did have to use the Devel Generate to generate a bunch of content. I hate using that module. Uh, it would be good if there was a module that can generate like real content. I don't know what that real content will be. And that's why I was trying to use Umami because it was kind of real content because this stuff is, yeah, it's not the best type of content. But then if you go to configuration and then search API, you can just configure your search uh, backend. And then setting up your index is pretty straightforward. You set it up just like any other search API index. One thing I did notice is that um, this available indexes option here wasn't available until you saved the index. So you had to kind of save it, then come back. And then um, you have... Yeah, you just configure your fields, you can configure it here. And then normally with the processes in Search API, you would do a bit of um, configuring here, but I've just kind of left that and left Algolia to, 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 do a lot of that, to do a lot of that stuff because you can actually configure stop words in Algolia. So it's kind of like, okay, well, who's gonna do the processing? Is it Search API or is it Algolia? Um, I don't know what the answer is really, um, but that's, but in this case, I've just, stopped it from indexing content that's unpublished. Okay, so from a Drupal standpoint, I really haven't done much other than installed Search API, configured Algolia, and then just sent the data into Algolia. Now what I'll do is quickly just show you is this uh, code sandbox.io. Now this is actually pulling out of, let me move this, okay. This is actually pulling out of the index now. So if I just search for things, it is near instantaneous. And, that, and that's one thing I actually noticed straight away was that the autocomplete is ridiculously fast. And if anyone's done autocomplete in Drupal, you know just how slow it can be. This is absolutely quick. Uh, there's, to me, it feels like no lag. You just click on it and you can, can go and you can just search for things. Um, now, from a code standpoint, as I was mentioning earlier, like this is all just normal boilerplate React code. You put in your API um, app key, put in your search API key, and this is, 
And this is the meat of it, essentially. And that's it. So if you want to define a refinement list, this is essentially just this type facet down here. Because if I just remove that, there you go, type facet gone. And when I was playing around with this, I, I actually had a thought. It's like, how hard would it be to grab this and chuck this into Drupal? Because one thing that I've kind of, um, well, I've always felt this with, with Drupal and especially views, if you create, if you try and create crazy, crazy search pages in Drupal, sometimes it's just easier to write custom code to handle it instead of spending hours bending views in a particular way. Um, sometimes it's just better to just write it in custom code. And so I thought, I thought, how hard would it be just to grab this bit of React and then just chuck it in Drupal so that you could essentially just display it in Drupal. So that's what I did. And let me grab this. Um, so I created a basic module here. And it's all it's doing is this is a block. And it's loading up a, an attached library. And I've got, um, I am importing in, well, I'm adding in this external uh, instant search.css. So this just gives it a nice look and feel. Well, it just doesn't look, make, it, make it look terrible. Um, and then here in the JS, I've got the same bit of code. So if we have a, have a look here, right, it's bringing it in. And then I was playing around with a few extra things like transforming the items and this just puts it all to uppercase. And you can see here all of the options here. So this is, so this is the bit of the same bit of code. And then if I go here, and what I ended up doing is I ended up just creating a search page, basic page, and I just and I just added the block to the content region. It's a bit hacky, I understand, um, but I just wanted to do it for this demonstration. And I just put a block visibility setting. But now this search is looks as if it's in Drupal. And this is and this is one thing that I feel I'll be doing a lot in the future, where if you do get crazy, crazy search requirements, I mean. You don't have to use Algolia, just build your search pages in React, especially if there's like crazy interactivity if they want. Um, and I think this is maybe the future of Drupal where you're just dropping these little applications, little React applications or Vue applications on top of things. So yeah, this is absolutely like the speed is, it's hard to actually show you the speed of it, but it is near instantaneous. And that's one thing I really do like about it. Now, one thing I will just finish off with is that every single time you make a change, here, if you click here, 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 okay, that's considered an operation. And if you look in the analytics, I think, no, in the overview, yeah, you can see that it does slowly, oh, no, not that one, let's pop this off. So if we have a look here, and you take a note of this analytics, and you just, you will notice that it does creep up and change, and it moves up pretty quickly. So. I don't know how how quick you would go through the 50 or 50,000 operations if you have you know, a decent amount of traffic, but that's just something to be aware of. But I think for the paid one, it's 250,000 operations. So that's um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. It's a it's a good platform. I would recommend that you look at it. And um, yeah, I thought I'd share it with you. So that's about it. Any questions? Hey, Ivan, I have a question. Um, did you have any uh, weirdness with things like caching or, I mean, like, looking at it, it's all pretty much done on the page, but is there anything you'd, you'd want to consider going forward if you're using like a CDN or something? Is there going to be any issues, do you think? Um, well, with the CDN, you're going directly to Ang Algolia search. You're not, you're not even touching Drupal. Mm -hmm. so, so, so as soon as your content is indexed, it goes to Algolia search and so here, if I search for things, you'll see that um, yeah. this query appears. So this goes directly to Algolia. You don't even touch Drupal. So there's real no caching issue because you're not even touching Drupal. And that's why these, this operation counts every single time you do any type of operation like this. So yeah, there's really no caching issues because you're not even touching Drupal. Yeah. And, that, and that's the same as performance as well. Yeah. Cool, thanks. There is another question. Does it search for content in files like PDF, TXT that are attached to the node, like extracting 
content from the file? Uh, not out of the box. You'd probably have to do that yourself. So there's ways of doing that. You could use like that, what is it, Tika, Tika library, and you'll probably have to write custom code to, you probably, you could do that by creating a custom processor um, in search API, extracting the data, converting it into either H, well, I think that Tika converts into HTML and then get that content indexed. I don't think um, Algolia has that functionality. I'm no Algolia expert. I'm not sure if it's got that type of functionality to read it, but there's, of course, there's workarounds you can do. As long as you can extract that data into some type of text, then you can easily attach it to a search API property. And then as soon as it's a search API property, then it can get indexed into Algolia. So yeah, there is search API attachments. But I'm not sure how integrated it will be with the Algolia search API module. So that's kind of, you know how in Drupal it's like, yeah, you have two modules, but you just write that bit of custom code to just kind of link them up together. That's probably what you have to do. Can it search uh, data source beyond cache data? For example, data tables. Um, well, if you're using search API, search API I itself can only, it only works on, um, it only works on, ent well, search API technically can work on any data source that it integrates with. So out of the box, it integrates with the entity system. Um, so what you could do is, I think, um, I think the Algolia search does download uh, let me just double check. I think it does It does use a library, an, an actual PHP library. So, at, you know, at the end of the day, you can just use the actual um, user Algolia search client um, PHP library and then just push your content up by writing custom code. So at the end of the day, you can always just write custom code. But I think with search API, it may not be that easy out of the box because generally you use it to index entities. Sorry, just one real oh. quick one, not really yeah. related. Sorry, I was just, I'm trying to find it myself, but oh, no, the, that's right. this, this, is, this is sort of unrelated to the, the technology, right? But when you signed up for the service, did you find anything in a, in a clause or terms and conditions that sort of limited the type of content that they will index? Are there any restrictions on things that they will store? Like, can, uh, just, just saying, just saying, can I upload bomb making instructions to this thing? <laughs> Oh, I haven't, I haven't looked at the, the terms and conditions that way. No, I haven't. I'm not sure. Um, I'll, I'll try and find it myself. Sorry, just wondering if you came okay. across the way you were looking. Because oddly enough, it doesn't come up in search on this site. So, uh, you know, yeah, it should be yeah. fine. Yeah, I don't know. That's a, yeah, that is a, that is a good, good question. It's, yeah, really, so, it's not a very healthy question, I realize. I'm sorry, Tim. But I just, just, just as an example, I'm just wondering if there are any. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because, yeah, the last thing you want to do is have, yeah, be kind of deplatformed for some reason because you have, because it's looking through your search content. Yeah, of yeah, absolutely not. It's a it's a good it's a good legitimate question. Um, I do know that on the free plan, it's only it's non commercial content. Now, when you think about it, what does what no not sorry non commercial use. So you know what's non commercial use? Who knows? Well, it's obvious to figure out, but yeah, that's a bit of a gray area.